All right, everybody. So this video is going to be for Heather Phillips, who has asked me to give her some instruction on how to make a beer box, or in this case, a soda box hat for her son or daughter's 4-H group. And we're gonna make this a video where it's kinda quick and just self-explanatory that you do not necessarily need an alcoholic beverage box to make a hat. So we'll start with this. In this video, we're going to basically just demonstrate how to make the crown out of a soda box. I know not everybody wants to rock an alcoholic beverage box. So what we're gonna do is use this one. Obviously the handle has already been ripped out. So this part of the box is gonna be unusable and we have to concentrate on using this particular section right here. So the first step is just going to be to try and dismantle the box without tearing it up any further, creating any further damage. So you start with these tabs. And then since this is already ripped, I guess we'll just go ahead and part the box down the middle like this. Now in some cases, if this piece were still intact, you could basically piece it back together and then come on the inside with some tape and close that section back up. But for today's purposes, we're just going to open the box up and we can just remove this material right here. I think we should have enough to use. If we don't, we're both gonna learn something today. So most of my measurements So making a beer box hat or crown out of material is going to require an 18 by 16 piece of real estate and just taking a quick glance at this I can tell that this is going to be roughly 16 inches wide and not quite 18 inches tall so um, that direction is not going to work so what I'm going to do is we'll do 18 inches across and we'll do 16 inches this way does that make sense so we'll do 16 this way and we'll do 18 that way and the best thing to do is determine where the middle of this is and the middle of your width and then divide that in half and measure out your 16 by 18 and I'll do that now while you're doing your measurements go ahead and turn your heat gun up to high plug it in and that way it's, it's heating up and it'll be ready to use when you finish laying out your dimensions So to make this easy, I'm going to measure from this crease and this crease right here, which is 15 and a half inches. Half of 15 and a half inches is seven and three quarters. that wrong seven and three quarters don't do that all right and then we will determine the distance from here to here with the middle going down there stand there. So the best way to find the middle of this is to take and line your ruler up on this edge here and then come up with an even number on this side which would be six divide that in half would be three. So the best way to do this would be slide it up and since you've already determined this is your medium 
we can just kind of guesstimate right there. All right, now that we have those two intersecting points, we can divide, we want this total to be 18 on the top. So put your ruler at the nine and you can mark out your 18. And then what we need to do is find the 16 from here, which half of that would be eight. And it looks like we're gonna be short. We're gonna be short a half an inch here. We're gonna be short because the box isn't quite long enough. But um, well, let me mark this off. and this is going to be just a test box to see where we actually turn out because I do know that I'm going to come down four and a half inches so we should have enough real estate there to actually accommodate for what we need. All right, so we have the 18 inches across from here to here, and we're just shy on the 16, which ends up being, we've got 15 inches. So we're missing a half an inch on each side. So the next step that I do is I determine half of five and a half. I need five and a half inches here and here. And what I'll do is take my ruler, two and three quarters is five and a half. And then you just continue this line straight across. I'm going to go ahead and mark these lines just to indicate where this seam of the box is. And now what I want to do is take my ruler and I'm going to draw another line right here in the middle. And it's just the width of the ruler. All this line is, is just a, a focal point for me to connect some some dots here so now that I've got those done I need to recess in one half of an inch okay and the next step is going to be measure down one and a half inches down here. And then from this line, I measure down one inch. And then this line here in the middle, just connect this line right here. And 
Now typically what I would do is I would measure from here over to here four inches. But since we're a half an inch short, I'm going to have to get a little creative. And assume that my mark would be right here, which would put my intersecting point right there. What's that distance? Three and a half inches. Yeah, so, okay. So if I, if this were actually 16 inches tall and I'm one inch short, which means I'm a half inch short there and a half inch short here, instead of that being four inches, we'll just make it three and a half. And that should keep the same angle as I would particularly have on my original template. So we'll measure over three and a half inches there. Okay, now that I basically have all of the dimensions laid out, I'm going to take and transfer this line, which indicates the middle right there, and I'm going to do the same right here, and now I'm just going to take my razor blade and I'm going to cut out certain sections, I'm going to take and draw this line down here, I'm going to cut this triangle out. I'm going to make one cut straight to the outside here and I'm going to cut just this little this little ear out. You can leave it if you want but I just typically cut it out. It's just like an extra piece of cardboard that doesn't need to be there. Cut the two layers right there. Now, I'm kind of worried about this. I don't know if that's going to be a problem or not, but I do know that I'm four and a half inches or four and a quarter inches down on the side of my hat. So basically, I'm coming down four and a quarter when I bend my tab up to make the, uh, the flap. And it looks like that's going to be about an eighth of an inch in the way but we will soon find out so uh, before we flip this over we do need to make just a little scoring line right there down the middle I don't cut all the way through I basically just make a score mark there and I make sure that my tabs can bend upwards so I take my straight edge fold that and basically make sure that I can see that where the seam is going to be on the opposite side. Now by this time we hope that the hot glue gun is heated up and ready to go. And now that we have all these kind of pre-bent, I would practice bending this over and getting it going in the correct direction. And that mark that I transferred from the inside right there is in the middle. Just fold this over kind of give it a bend in this direction. You see where that is kind of flipped up 
we'll just add a little tiny bit of glue. That'll hold that down. Then fold this over, give it just a little bit of a bend to apply pressure to where that hot glue has been laid down. We're going to line up these two points right here in the middle. You can kind of eyeball where everything is going to go. So you just put your bead of hot glue straight down here. Fold it over. Apply pressure. We'll do the same for the opposite side. So now at this stage, you should have a hat that or a crown that looks pretty much like this. Um, one of the measurements that I typically like to use is to measure over, measure over one quarter of an inch to fold this over and kind of give me myself a, a, an area where it would um, line up. But since we are half an inch short on the length, that's going to throw a measurement off a little bit, but if you just get somewhere in the vicinity, you're going to be okay because when you cut out the brim, you can adjust for the size of how, keep hitting it, but when you, this is how you can kind of adjust the size of how big or small you want your hat. So uh, after you make a couple of them and you determine that your hat is too small, you can extend it out to make the hat larger, or if you find out that your hat is too large, you can kind of bring this in and make the, the circumference of the hat a little bit smaller to fit a smaller head. But I typically just use the quarter of an inch rule of thumb and lay you down some glue on the inside of the, the tab here. Carefully fold this over. And I hold, the, I hold these two pieces together just for a couple seconds to let the glue sit cool down. And then we'll do the same for this opposite side here. And for the sake of this video, I'm just kind of guesstimating. It doesn't have to be exact, but a quarter of an inch is about that. Okay, so now that everything is glued together on the inside, just flip it over. You can use your fingers and press this down, or you could take a straight edge and press it down too, whatever you feel comfortable with doing. It makes a nice clean line when you use a straight edge. If you use your fingers, sometimes it can make this a little bit rounded, but you can modify that at your own discretion. And then the next step I would do is just cut off this excess material here. So now, like I said, the, um, the dimensions that I gave for this is going to be approximately 26 inches of um, circumference around the hat with the, the given length of four and a quarter from this seam down to the bottom there. 
and as you can see we have this tear so that's going to limit us to almost three and seven eighths um, so like I said if you have a taller head or in this case it may be made for children they might have a, a smaller head but you know from ear to top of your head would be this this pitch in the roof of the crown so my suggestion would be to take a um, an average measurement from here down to where you think that you could um, possibly get away with of making um, the right distance from the ear to the top of the head in this case would be about four inches and make that uh, guideline around the crown of the hat so that it's all you know pretty much even Now the next step would be just to kind of connect these dots, give you an idea of where to cut around. And then now all you have to do is cut these tabs and what these tabs do they're going to give you some material to actually bend upwards like this and then when you set your your brim down on top you can put glue on here and it will stick those two pieces together and hold everything in place and then just march around the hat and bend these tabs up. And if you're like me and you used a permanent marker, be sure to cover up your guidelines. Um, you could use a washable marker that would wipe off, that would probably be recommended, or use something that can be removed with a magic eraser or some kind of cleaner. But for demonstration purposes, I used a black permanent marker so you guys could see what I was referring to. And then once all these tabs are bent up, you can see that there's some double layers there. That could add to the thickness of the, um, the crown as you made the brim onto it. Not important, but I like things to be kind of neat and tidy when I'm doing one professionally. I guess I could say professionally since I'm the one who's doing most of these. But very carefully with a straight edge you can just remove these tabs and it will leave you with a, a single layer all the way around. And like I said, if your box is not ripped or damaged on the handle area that will give you just a little bit more of um, aesthetics on the side. But basically that is a breakdown of how you would do a soda box versus um, a traditional beer box. I hope you enjoyed. If this was helpful to, helpful to you, please consider giving me a super thanks and uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Appreciate it.